Hello everyone, this is Foxy Papa Smurf, for FPS Gamer for short, bringing you another map showcase created in Halo 2 Anniversary's Forge. And this map is my final submission for the 5v5 Squad CTF contest. This map is mostly symmetrical, so we'll start off here on Blue Base. And Blue Base has some interesting geometry. I like to use pieces in unconventional ways so that maybe they're not so recognizable. And Blue Base is fairly substantial. You have plenty of cover and lots of areas to explore and to find a good vantage point. I could have made the bases less substantial, but I wanted to make sure people who spawned here had plenty of cover. Each base spawns with a sniper rifle with half the ammo. And from here, there's not a whole lot that you can see. You can see up to the center platform where most of the fighting will be going on, but your line of sights are for the most part blocked if you decide to stay here in the base where it's nice and safe. The one place you can see a pretty long distance is through the sword hallway, but we'll get to that in a moment. In the front of the base, there's this grav lift that takes you up to the very top. And from here, you can drop down to where the flag spawns, or you can stay up top and hopefully pop some headshots. And dropping down to the front of the base, we'll now go through the sword hallway. There isn't very much cover in here, so you don't want to get stuck in the middle of it without a long-range weapon. This is the shortest path between the two bases, so I wanted to make sure it was a little bit of a gamble if you decided to go through there. And as you can see, the sword spawns here, and if you stay inside with it, the sword can be a very, very valuable asset. Now you'll see we're out in front of Red Base, which is an exact recreation of what you saw over on Blue Base. Each base is also equipped with an array of vehicles, including a machine gun warthog and a gun goose. Because although there are a number of walking paths on the map, there's also a drivable route that goes around the entire map. I made sure it was nice and flat and wide to provide a lot of drivable area for those in vehicles. but I added a good amount of verticality for those combating the vehicles so that they didn't have to worry about getting splattered. And that brings us to the single most important resource on this map, and that is the Hornet, which as you know has a machine gun, a rocket launcher, and can also carry your fellow teammates if need be. And that can really come in handy here in a moment as I'll show you. There are a number of ways up to where the flag spawns. You can go directly alongside this big spire, or you can travel up the back. We'll take this side route first, and show you that you can actually go inside of this structure. And inside the structure, there's a couple routes. There's a grav lift that brings you to the very top, and there's also a little hole that drops you down to the sniper hall. And that is more or less a one-way route, unless you have a buddy to jump off of or a well-placed grenade jump, you really can't get back up there too easily. When I have a lot of bridges and walkways, I like to have a solid landing, a nice flat area where you can have brief skirmishes between players. So that's what this platform is right here. Originally it was just a bridge, but I decided to make it a little wider to offer players a little bit of battleground to play with. And going up these tall towers, you can see that this gives you access to the very top level. And this is where you'll find a large sightline blocker. And where that gravity lift brings you that I showed you earlier. Control of the map itself really comes down to controlling this upper platform. This is where the really important battles that will make or break a flag capture will happen. And as I mentioned, the Hornet is a very, very powerful tool on this map. If you're stuck up here and the Hornet's circling around, there's really not much you can do about it. It's just going to tear your team apart. So to counter that, there are a number of things you can do. First of all, up here spawns a rocket launcher. And as you know, in Halo 2 Anniversary, the rockets do lock on. And it has a number of shots available on it. But if the rocket is not available, or you want to conserve your ammo, there is the ability to activate this EMP device, which, as you know, disables all vehicles around a, a certain radius. So once your team has gained control of the top platform, you're free to run across this long pathway that leads to the flag. And I know these long sight lines aren't ideal, but this map is designed 
to specifically have these so that once you destroy the enemy team and they respawn at their base, they have a chance to stop you once they see you running for the flag. If you decide to go the slightly safer route, you'll be going back up to this top platform, or you can take this shortcut which drops you right on top of the sword hallway. It's important to remember though that you walk pretty slow with the flag, so you want to have a teammate or somebody covering you from behind. But once you've made it to your side of the rocks to your base, unless your opposers have a very proficient sniper on their team that's waiting for you, there's really nothing they can do about it. As with the majority of my maps, I added a bunch of these trick jumps and secret pathways and things that you can exploit to give you an edge. And I specifically add those in there to add diversity to the map and so that the map is replayable. You can play this map once and get more or less an idea how it works and then play it again in a different game type and notice something that you didn't see before. One power up that is a little bit underrated is the speed boost, especially on this map, because once you activate the speed boost, you have it for approximately 30 seconds, and that is just enough time for you to run across this platform along the pathway that gets to the flag, drop down to the sword hallway, make it around your side of the base, and plant the flag just as it runs out. Well, thank you guys so much for taking a look at this. For those of you that are in the contest, I wish you the best of luck. I don't typically make squad or big team battle maps, but having done this contest, I can see that it was a lot of fun, and I'll probably make more in the future, whether there's a contest related to it or not. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share this video with any other forgers out there that you think would appreciate some of the ideas shown here. And please feel free to leave some constructive criticism in the comments below. These maps by no means are an exact showing of how the map is going to stay forever. The maps slowly evolve over time. So I really do appreciate those suggestions. But thank you so much and I'll catch you guys next time.